Hi everyone, welcome to this talk. I'm Neha Narkede. I'm a co-founder and head of engineering at Confluent. I'm from Silicon Valley and, and um, this is the enterprise technology meetup in New York City, so I just replaced my hoodie with this jacket to fit in. <laughs> and I have only 10 minutes to speak. And so I'm going to speak really fast. Don't worry, it's being recorded. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Apache Kafka, which is a very popular you know, big data messaging system. I'm going to walk through kind of why we built it, what problems it solves at LinkedIn and several other companies where it has been used, and how Confluent is going to help companies leverage real-time data at scale. So something about the company, a few months ago, uh, some of us who created this uh, technology left LinkedIn to start Confluent. We raised uh, roughly 6.9 million in Series A funding, uh, led by Benchmark Capital and um, co-invested by LinkedIn and Data Collective. We're currently at 18 employees and headquartered in Mountain View, California. So, you know, rewinding back to 2009, uh, when I joined LinkedIn, we were really struggling with two problems. Uh, firstly, the types of data that we wanted to collect were changing very rapidly and becoming more and more real-time and high-throughput in nature. So we wanted to collect not just our database data um, and messaging data, but also like high-throughput data like logs and metrics and user activity data from the hundreds of millions of LinkedIn users. And the second problem was that we were also building a lot of specialized distributed systems. You know, we had a search system, we had Hadoop, we had distributed databases, we had relational databases as well. And so the main challenge was really figuring out how to make these diverse data sources available to all the different systems, uh, hopefully in real time. And so this is actually a simplified version of uh, what our complex data pipeline looked like, and, and hopefully I think most of you might find this to be a familiar picture. Uh, this scary picture had actually evolved over time as we added these new data sources and systems, and as we added these ad hoc point-to-point -point connections so that we could get the data to flow the way we wanted. Now, each part of this pipeline was pretty sufficient. If you looked at it, it made a lot of sense. But if you zoomed out and looked at the bigger picture, any kind of product that required access to a different kind of data sources was really more like a research project. And you know, above everything, the main problem was that data was really fragmented. So for example, our business metrics were available in the warehouse, but not in the real-time monitoring system. So we had a way to get daily reports of important business metrics, but no way to get real-time reporting. This is actually very commonplace. Um, on the contrary, we had an ability to collect all our application metrics in real-time. So our, uh, the IT infrastructure was monitored in real-time but no way to ask like deeper analytical questions like you know what are the top applications that are slowing down the page load times for linkedin you know in short it was pretty much a giant mess we had millions of these disparate data pipelines between systems no way to centrally manage data and uh, the huge problem was that no way to see how things connected so as engineers changed one part of the pipeline many other parts broke and um, you know this caused loss of time money as well as a lot of data so we took a step back and we thought hard about the problem. You know, definitely adding these point-to-point -point connections wasn't a very great long-term solution. And what we really envisioned was having this sort of a stream data platform you know, that could act as a central warehouse for all real-time streaming data in the company. And you know, we thought if this happened, then a lot of useful systems and applications that needed to process their data could evolve around it. And the second thing we wanted is for this platform to act as a source of truth pipeline for feeding our offline and batch ecosystem, which was evolving rapidly around Hadoop. So you know, if I were to describe what the problem is that we were solving, it's really that of data integration, which is nothing but just making sure that data ends up in all the right places with the right SLA. So you know, we were infrastructure engineers. We thought that there ought to be an infrastructure pro you know, solution to this problem, more than just writing these ad hoc tools. And so uh, you know, we started looking at a bunch of these enterprise messaging systems, because it, this problem wasn't a new one. You know, these messaging systems existed for moving data around in real time for a very long time. But as we looked more into it, we, we saw a whole bunch of problems. You know. Firstly, you know, if I were to summarize this, the, the design for these systems allowed you to move small amounts of data. So um, you know, the high throughput data sources like logs and metrics or activity data wasn't a very great fit. 
Uh, these systems are also designed to queue data between systems and not really feed the same data to multiple systems, which is one of the major requirements that we had. And these systems are not designed to enable any kind of distributed you know, real-time stream processing because that requires you to rewind and reprocess data. And enterprise messaging systems merely delete the data the moment a subscriber has subscribed it. And so, you know, we, as we thought more about this, we wanted to essentially re-architect these systems, so we just started from scratch. And that is what led to Apache Kafka. So in a high-level view, this is just a messaging system. There are producers that send events and messages to the central cluster of brokers. And this central cluster of brokers stores the data so that the consumers can then subscribe to topics or categories of data and get access to uh, all the data they need. But really, you know, Kafka is very different from a lot of other messaging systems in a variety of different ways. Firstly, it is uh, built like a modern distributed system from the grounds up. So every stage of this system is fully distributed. The brokers are, are distributed over a cluster of machines and data is fully replicated. Secondly, it is uh, persistent uh, by default. So uh, uh, you know, all the data in Kafka is backed with a very high performance write ahead commit log. And thirdly, it is a multi-subscriber system, so you can have either zero or n subscribers for the same data. So it is essentially designed to feed the same data to multiple systems, uh, including batch systems. So you know, it's worth taking a look at, it, this is a central abstraction that Kafka provides, which is you know, just a log. And log is just an abstract data structure that has a few properties. You know, data is completely ordered, it's append only, and it's immutable. And new records are appended to the end of the log file. Every record is addressable using a unique index known as a log sequence number. And so because the read as well as write pattern is completely sequential, this is what leads to the very high performance that Kafka provides. Now physically, if you wanted to scale that log out, you shard it into multiple partitions that, are li that actually live on the brokers. And if you did that, then that is exactly the back end of Kafka. And we have a policy for maintaining a fixed window of the log so you don't run out of space. And you can either configure it based on time, let's say, you know, uh, retain a few weeks of data, or based on size, retain maybe a few terabytes or less. So today, uh, you know, practically all data at LinkedIn is available as a Kafka stream. And what that amounts to is more than 800 billion writes and more than 2.5 trillion reads of messages per day. In the last couple of years, you know, Kafka has been used uh, very widely across uh, hundreds of companies worldwide. The list includes you know, web companies like LinkedIn, Netflix, and Uber, to larger enterprises like Cerner and, and Cisco and Goldman Sachs. And at these companies, uh, Kafka is used in a variety of different ways. For a company that goes all in on Kafka, this is probably what the Kafka adoption looks like. You know, Kafka powers all the data that flows through the company. For example, it powers log collection for several companies, so you can collect all these logs that are high throughput and feed it to your search system in real time and Hadoop in batch. It also powers all the metrics collection, so you can collect all your IT metrics and feed it to your monitoring system. A bunch of security-related processing happens in real time on top of Kafka, as well as you know it acts as a source of truth pipeline for your batch systems where most of the analytics and reporting still runs in a company. But really, as you make data available centrally that easily, you know, people find ways and means of processing it. And so you know, Kafka is actually a foundational building block for doing any kind of scalable real-time stream processing. So you know, what does stream processing really mean? You know, it is nothing but some code that takes in all these streams of data and it either filters or transforms or aggregates, does some processing, and then publishes more streams of data. With Kafka as the means of storing streams, this really just boils down to embedding a Kafka consumer, writing some code to process it, and then embedding a producer to send data to more topics. So if you, you know, if we had enough of these stream processing applications that formed sort of a topology, then you'd want to use one of the many like open source frameworks that are popular today to do this. Um, and there are pros and cons of each that I won't get into the details of in this talk, but the key thing to note here is that each one of these frameworks, they make it easy to deploy your stream processing code, but really integrate very closely with Kafka to store all the streaming data. So you know, putting all of this together, this, this vision of having a stream data platform really boils down to two things. You know, first is a storage layer that stores all your streaming data, and applications and systems that evolve around that storage layer to really process that data and then munge it in, in useful ways. 
And really streaming or real-time data could mean different things for different companies. So there are retail companies and there it means streams of orders and shipments. And for the Internet of Things, it could mean you know, collecting activity data from all these zillions of devices that are supposed to exist on the Internet very soon. And for finance, it means you know, streams of financial transactions. Really, the purpose of having this sort of a stream data platform in your company is so that you can make all these disparate data sources available centrally in a uniform way, um, no matter how and when they are generated. And any place in the company that has most of your data ends up building this useful ecosystem of tools around it. Uh, Hadoop has a bunch of uh, useful systems that are built around it exactly for that purpose. And there is an equivalent system that is evolving around Kafka, which is this streaming system, making it the central hub for all your streaming data in a company. LinkedIn, you know, we were able to realize this vision of building this platform at LinkedIn, and several other companies have uh, followed suit since then, making it really a trend in kind of data processing. So at Confluent, really, our mission is to make this stream data platform based on Kafka a practical reality everywhere. So in terms of the product, it, it means actually several things. Providing like first class stream processing integration on top of Kafka. Providing connectors so you can easily just plug and play different systems and make streaming data flow happen between those systems. A product to help you visualize all the data flows in your company in real time and be able to trace a data source as it moves through different systems, be able to track how complete data flows are and are, are not, and be able to alert on top of it and uh, have a very meaningful schemas and metadata management that works along with the rest of the product. So we had a first release of this product called the Confluent Platform uh, a few months ago, and we have a second release coming up very soon. And we are providing this as an on-premise product for now. We're also actively hiring as well as signing up customers. So I'm going to leave you with a few useful links. Thank you very much. I should have not. <laughs> the purpose was to have you write it down. <laughs> okay, any questions? There you go. So I just want to go back to one of the slides and really place the uh, sort of alternative immersion real time processing framework such as Storm and Spark, right? Yes, this one. So from a very high level, you just outline the difference and the particular advantage of uh, Kafka compared to those. So, you know, um, each one of these systems actually, um, they integrate on top of Kafka. So, so think about it like HDFS and MapReduce, where MapReduce is kind of the processing layer and HDFS is the storage layer. So Kafka is really the storage layer for all your streaming data. And each one of these systems merely make it easy for you to express your processing code. And processing could mean anything like, you know, you're writing a simple filter or you're aggregating data or, or you're transforming it. So each one of these systems actually have their own take on providing you those convenience so that you can deploy your processing code more easily in a distributed fashion. So it's kind of complementary. So oh, yeah, it's exactly complementary. Sure. Someone that way. Um, in, in the early days before these frameworks existed, what did you do to develop a community around your product and how did you get this developer community to start building? So the question is, how, you know, before these systems e existed, I guess, how did we develop our community? Um, so I think, you know, uh, as, as far as success of open source is concerned, um, the more the adoption, the more the success you have, right? Uh, plus, if you have like a real use case and a real company using it, then that is, you know, even better. So we built this at LinkedIn and we solved some important problems in LinkedIn. And those were very common for a lot of web companies back then. And a lot of startups and web companies essentially started picking it up, and we actually were really, you know, LinkedIn's culture is focusing on open source. And so we focused a lot on building a very strong open source community, helping people essentially for free. Uh, and that, you know, coupled with um, good engineering, uh, it really led to Kafka's success. Any other questions? I guess we're done. <laughs>